three, two, one. Action, gotcha. Ryan. Welcome, everybody, to episode 199. That's right. We're going to party like it's 199. Yeah. Dude, uh, if we're partying like it's 199, that's like 1 BC. I don't know. Or D- AD. I don't know. All I know is it's uh, it's episode 199 of the Geek Dad Report, the one show dedicated, formulated, specially created into bringing you all the nerd news you need to know. All I put in a smile, like Ryan has, on his beautiful face. Uh, I am Brian West, the hostess with the absolutely, positively mostest. Hoo-yah! And I am Ryan, who fell down the stair and has a giant bruise that's all the way down the whole side of my body and possibly a cracked or broken rib, but I'm too stubborn to go to a doctor to find out. Okay, so before I ridicule you and make fun of you incessantly, is this related to your medical condition? Because if it's not if it is, I don't want I don't want to just be that asshole. Uh, partially I I took a step too early uh-huh. because it was kind of a dark part and I uh, slipped and Crashed into the banister and so then you, fell over onto the ground. Would you say that this has more to do with you getting old than it does with you just can't see anymore? Yeah, I'm going to say it's my disease so that you can't make fun of me about I'm it. I'm going to say that you're just getting old and missed a step like I actually did the other night and almost broke my freaking femur. Oh my God. <laughs> Listen, people, after you get over the age of like 35, <laughs> stairs are dangerous. Don't use them. I could read for like 10 minutes <laughs> rambler people just get ramblers two-story houses are death traps especially I'm, when you're old I'm like just gonna Ryan. go with a one-story ranger so, uh, so, so, so you may have cracked ribs and you just don't want to go to the doctor well i'm pretty sure it's crack because like getting up hurts and uh Anything like that. But well, I'll say this. Unless you have a rib protruding. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was nothing like that. But it's just, my whole side is just purple. Oh, dude, I cracked a couple ribs uh, camping one time playing football. And, yeah, I went to the doctor. I did go to the doctor. And they were like, don't yeah. breathe. <laughs> Thanks, doc. It's, it's not like the, you know, oh, I'll feel better tomorrow kind of thing yeah, anymore. No. So, dude, dude, Well, here's the here's the bad news for you. It hurts literally until it heals, and it heals in about six weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not a speedy recovery anymore because we're not young and vibrant. No. Well, I mean, I am. Yeah. I'm like 23 well, and a half. I'm younger than you, so. Whatever. Whatever. Enough of us being old. I have plenty. You know what? If, if this is the old man podcast, which, you know, uh, we have some things coming up. Maybe this will be the old man podcast. More to come mm-hmm. at a later date or at the end of this episode. We'll talk about that later. But, uh, but yeah, we got a episode 199. We got an action packed show. We missed a few weeks. Uh, I know we've been doing every other week. Sorry, we didn't do it last week. I was on vacation spending some time with my family. Um, mainly getting my ass handed to me by my wife at Putt Putt Golf. First of all, we went we did a, we went down to the, the ocean, right? So we went down to the coast for a week with the kids, had fun. Uh, we were can't, we were staying at this place right next to a putt putt golf course, and my my kids mm-hmm. were just the whole time. We gotta play putt putt. My wife is like, I don't want to play putt putt. I hate putt putt. Stupid. Blah, blah, blah. All right, whatever. So we yeah. play. We we finally break her down to play putt putt, and and who knew it? My wife is like the Tiger Woods of freaking putt putt. Apparently, dude, oh, she's geez. dropping. I'm watching like, her. Dude, I'm, everything. like, decent at putt-putt, and I'm having to watch her, like, drop every single freaking hole in one shot. It was, listen, That's it cool. was it was pretty demoralizing. I just, I mean, she just, I mean, she beat me by, like, 14 strokes. It was terrible, and I was in the second place, oh, right? She was, like, 1999 Tiger Woods. Oh, like, dude, just she, yeah, she, she should have her own video game, her own Xbox game called Holly, Holly West Putt-Putt where she just dominates. And so later that day, you know, I'm feeling pretty bad because I just got destroyed by her. Who She's never even played putt-putt and just crushes my soul. And so we go across the street to the uh, arcade, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is my time for a little payback, right? So we play some video games. She beats me at the video games. We play basketball, you know, a little shoot, a little basketball. Yeah. You know, I'm feeling pretty good. I got like 40 points. I'm like, yeah, what? I look over. 
And she's like, my machine's still going. And I'm like, what do you mean it's still going? I was like, she's like, I it buzzed and it's, yeah, well, she hit 50 and she gets a bonus. So I, I'm like, whatever. So I pull, I'm like, that, that must have been a fluke. One more time. She beats me yeah. again. Like, literally, I just gave up. She, I mean, this this vacation should have just been called Brian Gets Beat by His Wife. Did and you not, do, not like, the sexy way. Uh, paper, rock, scissors, and, like, yeah, arm like, wrestling. Oh, I should have. I dominate. I was, dude, I was, I was, I was about to just do coin flips in the air, heads and tails, and hopefully and I got a 50-50 chance of winning at that point. <laughs> should have gone with the arm wrestling, Brian. Yeah, I, mean, I should have. <laughs> she probably would have beat me at that too at this point. I don't know. It was pretty, it was pretty, uh, I mean, she was, whew, man, I did not expect that whooping to yeah. be coming. I mean, my but wife is quite the athlete. Brian, it, it just not your day. Dude, I mean, uh. listen, she's quite the athlete. Always has been. I did not expect the performance that I got from her. I was not prepared. I'm going to, I'm going to double my efforts. I'm going to train. I'm setting up a putt putt golf course in the backyard, practicing every day. I think that's a very viable uh, alternative career solution for you. Yeah, I think huh. so. I think it'll work out. I think it'll work out in my favor. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so we uh, we did that, and then uh, we went and went to cool saw some cool uh, parks and stuff. Now we went. It was pretty fun. Hung out in the ocean. I got more stories about that. We want to talk about it later if you want. But uh... my my weeks off were wasn't bad. I had my birthday. I turned thirty eight. Oh my god. So- and then I'm you fell down some not, stairs. It all makes sense now. So I'm I'm still not forty. Um, and uh, yeah, that and you know just kids sports and and all that stuff. You know, not my wife and I are talking about you know how to how we're going to prepare for the coronavirus. So that's oh a new God. thing. You don't even be started uh, on that. That's I can't even talk uh, about. We were talk. We were literally just talking about that before, <laughs> before the show. Uh, yeah fun no yeah we we had a long conversation uh and then i told her about the email that uh that the federal employees got oh, um nice. about it so hey yeah, don't worry mike pence is in charge he's gonna have things handled <laughs> we're in great shape it's oh, gonna be God. Fun. and you know why is mike pence in charge you ask because donald trump defunded the emergency response team hey. the cdc emergency response team yeah. Hey. It's just going to be literally thoughts and prayers. So yeah, that'd be, that uh, works. Hey, it works for everybody down south. Uh, what else we do? So you know, there's one more thing I want to say. So when we were down, when we went on our vacation, we went to we went down uh, on the coast, and uh, the kids wanted to go to the beach, and it was like 45 and windy, and me and their mom were like, "There is no way we're hanging out on this cold ass beach." So we're like, "Yeah, sure." So my wife buys them a whole bucket of sand toys. We pull up on the beach because you can drive out on the beach. So we pull up on the beach. We yeah. open the doors. We kick them out. And me and her sat in the car and watched TV. And then I took a nap <laughs> while they were building now, was it, castles. Was it typical Pacific Northwest rock beach? No, it was actually. It was, so we were staying at Long okay. Beach, which is, uh, which is like just right north of Oregon. So we were actually oh. staying, like if you look on a map, right where the um, Columbia River meets the Pacific Ocean, right there. Which is actually really cool. I got some awesome pictures. Sand, at least. Yeah, no. It was, uh, yeah, it was real nice sandy beaches. Um, like I said, it was really cool seeing how the ocean met the river and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so the kids could play in the sand. We just were just like, it's old. No, it's got, my wife's got seat heaters in her car. So we were just like, we we're just watching something on Netflix, sitting in our cars, their seats reclined with the seat heaters on while they built sand castles right outside the car. Uh, at one point, I have... fell asleep and took an old man nap, which was really nice. And and they survived all by themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't like drop them off and then drive away. We just <laughs> turned the car off and sat there and let them play. Uh, we just didn't want to get out. Yes, they did not die. They were not taken. We we did not we did not park right next to the ocean where a wave could take them or leave them so strangers could could steal them. We just uh, we could watch them right from our windows. We just decided we didn't want to get out of the car. <laughs> Well, if, if something had happened to them, we would not be getting the treat. Oh, yes. That we have. Yes, it's so funny you should, funny you should right. mention that. So, uh, we do have a huge show for everybody. We got tons of news. We got some recommendations. We got some, a lot of fun stuff. Um, but uh, before we did that, we thought we'd take a little, do a little, take a little side, I don't know what you call it, a little special presentation. My youngest, Charlie, has been, uh, has been asking to present something that, uh, that she made in class. Um, so I told her she could come on the show. So for the very first time, she'll be on the show tonight. Um, a little context. 
what we were about to what we're about to see is um we got called in the parent teacher conferences. Well, you know what? Hang on. We'll, t- we'll, we'll, we'll let Charlie get here. So, all right, Charlie, come here. So, first time ever on the show, my youngest daughter, hey, Charlie. Charlie. Say hey. Say hi, Charlie. Hi. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Well, I'm very glad that you're doing good. Are you excited to be on the show? Yeah, this is pretty cool, huh? It's a big, it's a big moment in a young daughter's life when she gets to podcast with her old man father. And now you get to tell all your friend to school that you're on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, uh, and your dad promises not to swear too much tonight, so that way maybe your friends can watch this episode, <laughs> or at least the first half. Um, okay, so anyway, so we, uh, my wife, gets we we have parent teacher conferences a couple weeks ago, and uh, we go in for them, and I couldn't make it. It was really early in the day, and so my wife calls me, and she's like, "You are not going to believe what your what your youngest daughter wrote this week." And I said, "What?" She's like, "Well." Um, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. So you guys all had a, you all had a writing project, right? Um, it was like a reader's workshop and we got to make our own stories. Okay. So you had a reader's workshop and you got to pick whatever story you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. So Charlie picked her own story. Here, stand up. Make sure everybody can see you. That's good. Um, she picked her own, her own special story here. Um, and my wife read it and she's like, you're not going to believe this. So she brought it home to me to read and it was one of the greatest things I've ever read in my life. Um, and I told Charlie that I loved it and that we would talk about it on the show. And she, she didn't want us just to talk about it. She really wanted to, to read it and talk about it on the show tonight. Right. So that is why she is joining us tonight. So, um, I guess we shouldn't tease everybody anymore. You ready to show them what you wrote? All right. So this is written, written, uh, art, illustrated and thought of completely by my, uh, by my youngest daughter, my youngest daughter, Charlie. Are you ready for this? All right, so we're going to show everybody. All right, Charlie, they can't see your face, but why don't you tell everybody what this story is about, what it's called. It's about it. Well, here, we're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to, uh, all right. It's, it's called It, It, um, in the, um, chapter one, um, and it's about Pennywise and his daughter. Yes, so <laughs> if, if you couldn't hear what she said, it's, uh, the name of this book is called It, It. It's about uh, Pennywise uh, and his daughter. What's his daughter's name? Killy the Clown. Killy the Clown. Ooh. All right. And um, as you can see that the illustration, that's uh, that's Killy Wise right there. Oh, nice. See, it's it's a, it's a girl. It's a little girl version of it. Oh, Big okay. Tales. And then uh, what do we got here? We got Georgie's, we got Georgie's house. And Wait, is this a scary? I don't know if I can listen to a scary story. And yeah, so this is Georgie's right? house. Yeah, oh, you're going to love this story, Ryan. This is especially for you. I and this is... I very easily get scared, Charlie. Am I going to have nightmares? That's what I need to know. Just tell me yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have nightmares. Uh, oh. Okay, so this is the well house that it lives in. And what's and he saying? That, that's Opal Wise. Oh, it's Opal? Who's Opal Wise? The old Pennywise. Don't touch my computer. Oh. All right, so that's the old... It's the old Pennywise, Opal Wise. Oh. All right. So anyway, um, as you can see, she got a great job because this is in fact a great story. Um, before we get into the story, though, real quick, why don't you tell everybody why it's called It It? But because I didn't want to copyright. Yeah, she calls it the name. Off. Yeah, the name of the story is It It because she didn't want to get in trouble for copyright. <laughs> You know, that's very smart of you, Charlie. That Not a lot of people would think about that, but you thought about that. You thought about that because of that. Because of that, we can tell the story on this show tonight without getting sued by Stephen King. So this is going to be great. All right, here we go. So, you got, that's page, there we go, that's the first page. So this is page one. Do you want to read it? Hang on. There's the, there's the picture. We're going to, we're going to talk about the picture in a second. What's, go ahead. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Lily and her brother named George. They lived in... So once upon a time, there was a, there was a girl named Lily and her brother. So we got Lily and George, in case people need to keep keeping up. So there's little Georgie and her big sister Lily in the house they live in. All right, so they... And, and then they, they, they lived in Derry. They lived by a house called the well house yeah so they lived in dairy and also because of copyright this dairy is spelled d-a-i-r-y mm, all right that's they lived good. by the well house okay now this is where it gets really good here's the picture 
As you can see, there's a lot going on in this picture. We're going to break this down in just a second. Would you like to read the next page, Charlie? Lily made a book for George. He went outside when he saw a clown shirt. She said, I am Kelly. Yeah, so Lily made a boat for little Georgie. He went outside to float it, and when uh, he did, he saw a clown. And she, the clown said, I am Killy. So as you oh, can see no, here... So as you can see here, we got... We got the well house where Killy lives. There's Killy with the red balloon and okay. uh, blood coming out of her mouth. That's not ominous at all. Oh, my goodness. And there's Georgie with his little boat. You see his little boat there? Yeah, yeah there's his boat. Uh, and he's got blood coming out of his mouth already. It's oh, also geez. not a good sign. Here, we're going to hold it over here, though, so when you talk, people can hear you in this microphone. Okay, on to the next page, because the story only gets better from here, Ryan. All right, go ahead and read the next page. Then she said, give me your hand, and we did, and then she bit it off. <laughs> and then Ooh. it says, I tricked you, and then... The yeah, we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna show that. So yes, to yeah. recap, she said, "Give me your hand," and Georgie did, and he, and then she bit it off. And then the, Georgie's um, word bubble says, "My arm." Yeah, Georgie's word bubble says, "My arm." As you can see, he's on the ground. Oh with, goodness! Missing an arm with blood pouring out, and we have uh, Killy Wise the clown saying, "I tricked you." I tricked you. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. With a red balloon. And Georgie's arm hanging out of one hand, and she has her little fuzzy clown shoes, which is great. Yeah. All right, so we're going to move on to the next page. All right, you're doing very good, Charlie. How are you feeling? You feeling good about this so far? Yeah. All right. All right, now, now read this scary. part and read in here. When his older sister came and said, where are you, George? I need to find him. So, I have a lot of big, um, big bubbles on that. Don't read all of them. No, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll read them. They're fine. It's, it's <laughs> easier for me to do it. Okay, so we have uh, the sister saying, where are you, Georgie? And for whatever reason, there's a pack of dogs always saying bark, and they all have knives. No, swords. Oh, sorry. The they all have, have... Yeah, all the dogs have swords, and, and, then... and they're covered in blood. Hang on, hang on. And they're all yelling, bark, bark, bark. And then one of them is saying, charge, and then all... <laughs> And then Oprah Wise, right here on on the roof. Yeah. He's saying we are gonna jump off uh, from the roof, and then he said, "Oh no, had the dog didn't charge." Yeah. Him. So the, one of the dog dogs says charge. So the dogs are now charging Opal Wise, the old clown, uh, oh, who's wow. threatening to jump off the roof. And of course, the sun has sunglasses because you know it's sunny out. <laughs> yeah. This is simply amazing so far. Yeah. This is riveting. Here we go, Charlie. You ready? Yeah. Oh, hang on. Even better. Look. Killy Wise, I forgot about this part. Killy Wise the clown is in a in a storm drain. Oh, okay. Charlie, Charlie, don't lean on the... Don't lean... Stop leaning there. Come here. Remember I told you. You're going to knock the computer over. We're almost done. You're doing really good. Here we go. You're so good, Charlie. She's getting very I into your story. What else? What else do you want to say? It says I, would, that, I would like to read this bedtime right, story to my right children. Here it says because she oh. barked. Yeah, I got you. I got you. And then, and, and then Killy Wise in the in the drain is saying, "Why don't you come down here?" No, I said. It said, "What the? How did you get in?" Oh, there? how did you get in here? And then the dog said, "Bark." Oh, oh, there's a, there's a. Oh, I didn't realize that. There's a dog in the storm drain with Killy Wise barking at oh. her, and she's saying, "How did you get in here with the pack of?" Crazy dogs. And then her other speech bubble said, Yama, she ate the dog. Oh, and then she ate the dog. All right. That's, that's took a turn. All right, here we go. Next next page. Oh. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. So she went to get her gang friends. Her gang friends. They were Max and Billy and Fred and Opal. Um, which happened to mostly be kids from Stranger Things. Kinda, only Billy. It says, that's true, Billy and Max. And, and it says, I will find you. I need my gang. Oh, wow. Right there. So now, now, now who is this? Is this, uh, two cents. That's who is this? Lily. It's Lily. Lily is looking for her gang. Mm -hmm. Funny. All right. Funny. We're on chapter two now. We're on, the, we're on the second chapter. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Chapter two called Going to Find Georgie. 
I said to my friends. Hang on. Oh yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I said to my friends, "You do you know why we are here?" Then Max said, "We do not we, know why we are here." Do you know why we are here? No, we do not know why we are here. We are here. Here's our gang. Very well yeah. il- illustrated. <laughs> She's got her posse. All right. Oh, okay. Hang on. No, there's none on that page. Here we go. Let's try this one. Okay. Here we go. I remember we are here to find George. Yes, Max, you are right. I also got a plan, said Lily. Yeah, and so there's there's Lily wait, saying, wait, yes, Max. The and then speech bubble says, yes, Max. Yes, Max. Very good. All right. Oh, here's the back page of this here's one. Here's the back right. page. What's the plan, said Fred? I will show you, said Lily. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. Next page. We're going to find George. So they went to go find George. So there they are again. They're all going to find George. All right. Next page. Next page. This is, this is probably my favorite page. Chap- Chapter 3. They um, geared up to find George. You mean we are getting weapons, said Max. Yes, said Lily. So, recap. They are now gearing up to find Georgie. Okay. You mean weapons? Yes, they mean weapons. Now, here's the picture. She hasn't colored it yet, but here's the picture of them with their weapons. Uh, as you can see, oh. Lily has like a, a Tech 9 with a silencer, like an Uzi. What is this? Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's yeah. a knife. No, that's an Uzi, and then knives. It looks like yeah, a knife. That's a gun. Yeah, I know that's a gun, and then they've got a knife. So a knife and a gun, and mm-hmm. uh, why do you have a gun? Because <laughs> now, mind yeah, you, legitimate question. This is this is what she submitted in school. Luckily, her school yeah. teacher is very cool. Yeah. All right, next page. This. Is what we are wearing, said Fred. Yes, said Lily. But why do we have to wear it? This because, said Lily. I said Lily, and uh, she has not finished. And that is the end so far of the retelling no, of It, It. It's not the end. I, I didn't do a little picture. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you still got a couple pages yeah, left. Yes, wait. Yeah, you said this because, yeah, we read this. And you can see right here, looks like he's maybe got nunchucks mm-hmm. and a headband. And let me see the nunchucks. Oh, wow. The nunchucks. Yeah. These? Yeah, what is that? Oh, I don't know what that is. I well, I'm, well, we're going to say they're nunchucks. So this is where she's left off. But um, but this was the story that she submitted for her personal story. That's cool. what, what grade are you in again, Charlie? First grade. First grade, that is at least a seventh grade book that I think that we just witnessed. Can I show a hand? I mean, this is what it in the original story looked like. This is what it in Charlie's story. I mean, I think it's uh, the similarities are striking. Yeah, it's pretty. You know, I'm I'm glad you were thinking of the copyrights. So that's always something that you got to pick. I agree. You did a really good job. It's always good to not be sued. Uh, I like the original yeah. content. Um, and and you did a really good job of reading out loud. Yes. That's something that I know a lot of kids struggle with, and you did yes. a really good job you of reading really, out loud. Really good job. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about with the story? What was your inspiration? Why did you decide to write about it? Because I like it. And it's scary. <laughs> or it, it. Because you like it. Because it's scary. Uh, now we have wa- let her watch it, but before everyone thinks we're terrible parents, we had her close her eyes on all the violent parts. Mm. And she watched most uh, of it through a blanket. But she loves Stranger Things. It's like one of her favorite shows. And um, oh, and it, it, a good... it Chapter One is very much like Stranger Things, wasn't it? Yeah. She even had some of the. Same I think people. you should keep at it, Charlie. Um, and I want to see what the next book is like. Yes, okay. I cannot wait. So she's not seen chapter it chapter two, so I think she's a little not unsure of how to end it. But uh, I have full faith in you that you're going to come up with a great oh. ending to the story. Yeah. All right. More dolls with knives. That's anything, all I can say. Anything else you want to add? You want to say anything else before you go to bed? No? 
All right. Well, from uh, I'm very proud here. Yeah, and in behalf of uh, the Geek Dad Report, thank you for coming on our show. You've probably given yeah. us at least one more view than we were going to have before. Probably all the views, honestly. Yes. You did a I'm, great job. Charlie. I'm sure your mom is going to watch this at least 30 times. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, I love you. All right. Mm, okay. So nothing else to say? All right. Time for bed. Thanks for coming on. Right. Job. Charlie, thank you for bringing that to us. Love you. <sighs> that was glorious. That's all I got to say. Dude, I told you. Is that not the greatest thing ever? I'm... So... And and I'm just picturing Holly just like having to just go through this at the parent teacher conference. Oh well, and the best the best part to... the best part is uh, Charlie's teacher is kind of like an old hippie lady. Well, she's yeah. old, but she's older, um, and she's very free spirited. And she was just like, "Oh, Charlie did such a good job," and she used proper grammar. And the whole time, Holly's like flipping through this, and there's like you know dogs with swords. With blood dripping off him. Georgie's like on his knees, like crying. He's got blood gushing out of his arm. And I'm like, and then on top of it, dude, the, the, where I lost my, when I lost my shit on this thing, I was dying, is when I flipped the page and I see them, she's like, we got to gear up. Where's my gang? We got to gear up. And then like, she, one person's got a gun and the other's got a knife. I'm like, what? What are you watching? That's it. I'm changing the password on the Roku. <laughs> That's, that's a good question for you, Brian. What have you been letting your first grader watch? Dude, it's 2020. I can't control what my kids watch anymore. There's content literally everywhere. That's very true. They, they would give a kid a tablet and they can pretty much well, watch dude, anything. I, I've I've blocked YouTube. I've banned most most shows on the on the thing. They don't have access to almost. They don't have access to anything that's rated R. Even on the Voodoo, they have the family thing where it'll like skip kissing, so they get mad. So like when. Cause they, cause they haven't figured out how to f- voodoo hasn't done a good job with the algorithm yet. So like they'll watch Aladdin and when Aladdin kisses Jasmine, they skip forward. I'm like, all right, it's, it's rated G. I think it's all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I appreciate you uh, letting us witness that. That was, uh, that was pretty Dude, good. She was so I- proud of it. And I was, I mean, I was pr- hey, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of a proud dad. I mean, the subject matter, a little, a uh, little extreme, probably wouldn't have selected that, but it was actually well structured. It was a pretty decent story. The grammar, the copyright thing, I was dying. She's just like, she looks at me and I'm like, why is it called it it though? And she's like, uh, copyright dad, duh. I don't want to get yeah. sued. You no, know, I'm 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 actually glad that her generation understands that. I mean, uh, that's that's just something that you can run into. Yeah, but a lot. It's just good to see that she's creative and you know she's not afraid to you know do what she wants to create, and yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, she's uh, a very creative uh, child. So, um, yeah. So that was my youngest, Charlie. Don't get stabbed in your sleep. That's God help me you. when she's a teenager. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yes. Me and my wife got a lot of enjoyment out of that, and uh, we thought you guys would too. So there you go. There's Charlie's renditioning of it. I'm going to when she's finally finished. I'm gonna take up pictures, and I'm gonna I'm gonna. Tweeted to Stephen King. I feel like he would get a kick out of it, so we'll see what happens. I will let everyone know, and if she does finish it, we'll we'll bring her back on for the uh, the second yeah. half of it. It since you're Absolutely. all dying to know what happened to Killy, happens to Killy Wise. And it'd be great to have her back. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, like I said, um, we got a whole bunch of news to dive into. So, should we just do it? Should we just jump in? Get into the Ninja News, Ryan. That's what we do here. All right, so we're gonna come with we'll go. the uh, with the uppercut of information, Ryan. We're gonna come with the death blow of Killy the Clown of information, and then we'll uh, leg sweep whole legs off into little leg stumps. Oh my God! Dogs with swords, just leg sweep. Man, this uh. The story's really turned you dark, Ryan. I don't, yeah. I don't know if you can handle this. Of information. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> All right. Well, so we have a couple in our news stories tonight. We actually have a couple big stories. Um, we got a bunch of little news. So I figure we just knock out the little the side news real quick. Or do you want just do the big stories and then we'll do the little news what we have time we have All left. Right. Um, so, uh, but, oh, well, I guess the big the biggest news of the week is probably the uh, 
I don't know if it's seismic because we kind of knew this was coming for a while, but uh, but Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, has officially stepped down as the CEO. Um, this comes a little bit of a surprise. He announced that he uh, earlier last year he announced that uh, he was going to be transitioning out in 2021. Um, so the fact of his kind of abrupt retirement seemed a little strange to some people. Um, some people think he's going to run for president. God, I hope not. I mean, I like Bob Iger, but yeah. I think he just wants to enjoy his billions and billions of dollars that he has. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to let me pull it up here. I know he's. I think he's in his 60s. I mean, yeah, he's in his late 60s. He's not that old. Um, and, and to my understanding, he's still around. Um, yeah, he's well. He's gonna. Not, he's, he's just like left, and that you know he's not coming back or something like that. So. The, yeah, the he's guy, going. Well, he's up. gonna he's gonna continue to be the chairman, Disney chairman, until the end of his contract in 2021. So he's not going to go completely away. He's just gonna kind of cease yeah. the CEO operations. Yeah, they're still easing in the transitional phase and stuff like that. Well, so I mean, just... I'm trying to see if it shows how old he is. I think he's in his 60s, is what I believe. But um, you know, he's been. I, I think Disney. I don't know. For me, this is a little strange. We'll hear it real quick. Uh, so he's already named his replacement uh, Bob, a guy named Bob Chap- Chapik. He is a twenty-seven. Ch- he's a twenty-seven uh, year vet with Disney. Um, he's mostly been in charge of the parks and some of their creative uh, content stuff. So I don't think necessarily Disney Plus, but it sounds like he's in charge of parts, the parks, merchandising. Um, he's been in charge of a lot of the big money makers for the revenue drivers for Disney. So it's not a surprise that they put him in charge. I mean, CEO at the end of the day is, you know, a lot of times kind of a bean counter. So he, um, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, I think Bob Iger for me, I, I, I try to think too much about CEOs to be honest with you, because these guys are billionaires who, I don't know what they do. They sit in their offices and fire people. He revolutionized Disney. I mean, single-handedly revolutionized Disney into the modern area. Um, well, and and he, he really grabbed it and, like, pulled it into, you know, well, where it is. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to say is, you know, we don't – when we talk – we don't usually talk about CEOs. There's a handful that we do talk about, right? Bezos, we talked about Steve Jobs a lot, obviously. And I think Bob – Bob – Bob – Bob – Bob Iger – just combine their names – Bob Iger is definitely in that category. And I haven't read his book. I'd like to read his book. It, it seems pretty interesting. But to your point, yeah, he revolutionized Disney. I mean, Disney, um, who was it, Michael Eisner before? Just about collapse aspects of Disney until Bob Iger took over and really, you know, they brought in Pixar. They actually, they brought in Star Wars. They brought in Marvel. Um, you know, they rejuvenated the parks. I mean, there's Disney is such a behemoth now. It's It's hard to imagine that 20 years ago, you know, 20, 30 years ago, Disney, I don't know, it was like the 90s. Disney was struggling a lot, man. Their movies yeah. were not doing well. Half the stuff they did was direct to home video. Um, you know, they were they were on the verge of being just destroyed by Pixar in animation. And, you know, their parks hadn't had anything new or relevant in a long time. And Iger kind of stepped in. He came from ESPN. And when Disney bought ESPN, he came with them and kind of just st- – put his mark on things. The thing I liked about Iger, he's always seemed like a very calm and collected guy. He looked at things very, um, you know, like, Oh, Hey, from, from a person who likes content, you know, obviously some of these properties that Disney have are some of the most important properties to people like us, you know, uh, in yeah. honestly, the world in general, star Wars, Marvel, Di- you know, just Disney in general. And, and he always handled them. He always found a way to, to kind of walk that line between profitability and, and also, like, making it better for the people who enjoy these things, right? He always understood that, like, if we give people a great experience, if we give people things that they love and, 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 and they can be happy with and proud of, um, they're going to reward the company by continuing to spend money with us, right? So, at the end of the day, Disney's a business, but at least he made this a business that we could all, like, enjoy and really feel like we're part of their company. I, I heard him be interviewed um... – on the Bill Simmons podcast, and because he he had a book that he just put out mm-hmm. recently, and apparently it's, it's been uh, getting a lot of really good reviews. Yeah, um, I want to check it out. I do too. Uh, just like listening to him talking on the Bill Simmons podcast, he just like when you think of like you know a giant massive corporation CEO, you think of you know the person gonna be a douchebag, and yeah. you know they're 
They're not going to be like you think of Jeff Bezos <laughs> or anything like that. And you just seem like a really like normal kind of guy, I guess. A just kind yeah. of way of saying yeah. it or I, from I like how he was on podcast. So, yeah, I heard the same podcast, um, and he did not strike me as a you know a billionaire CEO of one of the most powerful companies in the world. Yeah, so it it was it was. He seemed like he he has his feet firmly on the ground, and that's why Disney was able to you know accomplish the things that they were able to accomplish. Um, and I do kind of want to check out that book that he he wrote. I so do, I do too. Oh, um, and it's gonna be good. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I do think I do think uh, do I think Disney will suffer with him gone? I think maybe a little bit. I mean, I, I do hope that uh, this new Bob guy. Now the board isn't confirmed. Bob number two as the new CEO. Yeah, I'm sure it'll happen. I doubt Iger would have, you know, announced him as his replacement if he didn't, wasn't fairly confident it was going to happen. Um, Bob, the new, new Bob's contracts only for a couple of years, his current contract. So I don't know if they'll give him a new contract or they'll kind of see how he does first. But um, the only thing that bothers me a little, it doesn't bother me. I mean, the only thing that worries me a little bit about uh, the, the replacement Bob is that he is so He's one of the the lead proponents of uh, so yeah he's he's driven a lot of revenue in the parks and other stuff but he's also one of, he also was a firm believer in price hiking and uh, and employee downsizing to help generate revenue and that is not always good for uh, for anybody especially when they don't really pay their employees that well in the first place yeah I mean the uh, parks have never been now I will say this the parks have never been better, but the parks have also never been more expensive. And, mm. and on top of that, I mean, ugh, is that, is that good news? I mean, I'm kind of glad I subscribed to Disney plus for three years because you know, how long is it going to be before this guy's like, well, Disney plus needs to turn a profit. Let's hit that button. And your five ninety nine becomes fifteen ninety nine. Well, just figuring out like, what is the market going to pay? Mm-hmm. And apparently when it came to the parks, they figured out that the market will keep paying whatever the hell it is you slap on that sticker price because they want to be that. Yeah, well, and even, I guess beyond that, I, I, my biggest concern with, with any time you have a, somebody taking over, somebody new taking over something that owns so many of the things that we care about, like you just hope that quality doesn't suffer, that the parks continue to be a great experience. That the Marvel movies continue to be great. That Star Wars, at least in my opinion, continues to be good. You know, and Pixar continues to put out hits. So, I think the world's better when Disney creates good content. I remember the days when Disney created crap, and uh, it's much you know, it's much better watching uh, Moana than it is watching Brother Bear Part Two, direct to home yeah. video. Yeah, Lady and the Tramp Seven. Don't care about Little that. So get more of everything. But uh, but that being but that being said, I think that's all I have to say about billionaire CEOs that don't give a shit about what we think. So eh. I think that's the most hardcore business that we've ever been yeah, on this podcast. There you go. And as you can tell from my bumbling and stumbling, I, business is not necessarily what I'm comfortable talking about. Well, I, I'll yeah. talk business all day. Talking about business CEOs, like I just don't know that world. I'm not a corporate person, but whatever. Uh, I, I pay attention to stock market, but I don't go that far. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do stocks. I like listening to you know. I've read Steve Jobs' book. I know that you can start a company and get fired from it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about something I am a little more expert level knowledge about. Uh, Star Wars. We had some uh, pretty. I, I, I'd call it pretty big Star Wars news this week. Um, Disney. <laughs> Say that. Yeah, Lucasfilm has been teasing a project called Project Luminous. Uh, for quite a while now, for the last couple of years, it's been uh, it's been a project they've been putting together for over two years, and nobody knew what it was. There's been lots of just lots of speculation what it could be. Uh, most people believed it would be kind of the next evolution of Star Wars. Now that the Rise of Skywalker saga has been completed, um, and sure enough, we got an announcement. Uh, what was it? The twenty fourth was that Tuesday? No, it's Monday. So we got an announcement on Monday. <laughs> Well, first of all, I felt kind of bad. So Disney has kept this under wraps for two years. Nobody's had an idea, and they had a big announcement for it that was ruined oh. hours early when the book uh, Del Rey Publishing accidentally put out the first book that they're going to release, like put it out, like what it's about and everything. And the name of the name of the book was Star Wars High Republic. Uh, I think the Lost Light or something. 
and basically let the cat out of the bag that Project Luminous is going to be a massive, massive endeavor into uh, comics, books, um, any kind of read media. But not just Marvel. They had like they're gonna like IDW. Dark and everyone else is going to be a part of it. Yeah, it's a multi, multiple multiple publishing thing over massive, you know, coloring books and 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 visual guides. All, just anything you could think of that has to do with a book form or something you can read on an iPad or whatever. Um, they they are doing this. They're spanning it out. They're going to do it in the uh, two hundred years. It's going to be set two hundred years before a Phantom Menace. Um, in a time called the High Republic. So basically what this is going to be is they're describing it as the Jedi Knights of the Round Table. So if you think of how Knights of the Round Table acted, that's very much what the, these Jedi Knights are going to be. Um, this is, the, this is the, the, the high point of the Republic. So this is the point where everything is the absolute best in the Republic. Yoda is going to be a young buff stud. No, he's not. He's still going to be like 700 years old. He's going to be in his late 600s. <laughs> He's going to be taking off his shirt and just have, like, chiseled body. My guess is that he'll still be – he'll probably still be on the council. Um, <laughs> he'll still be on the Jedi Council. I doubt he'll be out doing too much Jedi-ing. Um, yeah. Let's see here. It's going to take place, so like I said, 200 years beforehand. There's a lot of cool concept art. If you guys want to check it out, it's on, we put that up on our Facebook page. Um, it's going to have a lot of Jedi, smugglers. It's going to have all the things that you like about Star Wars. Jedi, smugglers – rogues bounty hunters yeah. but they're doing it completely fresh so a bunch of guys that think that you know they're smarter than everybody else and they know everything they're gonna have to start all over so. listen i'm sure it's still gonna happen um this is gonna be officially kicked off i'm not sure how many i'm trying to look i'm kind of grazing through this article um, i'm not sure how many exactly books they've announced they've, they've got a bunch of them coming out this year the first one's gonna launch in august of 2020 uh star wars the high republic light of the jedi um, that's going to be the first one. And then there's going to be subsequent ones that go along. Now, the thing about this thing that's actually kind of cool is this is not just going to be for, they're, they're trying to do something for everybody. So there's going to be some more adult theme type books. There's going to be a lot of, um, like you said, IDW is publishing a comic series that's going to be aimed for children. It's going to be a star Wars kind of like younger Jedi Padawan stories. Yeah. Um, but there's going to be literally something for everybody. Um, the story takes place after, oh God, what's it called? Uh, there was a, it's going to be kicked off. The story's going to be kicked off from some event. I forget what it's called. Like the, where'd it go? I can't find it. Um, there's anyway, there's going to be an event that kicks everything off. Um, the villains are going to be called the Niles, uh, the Nils. It's like N I L H, which a lot, which a lot of people have, uh, there's a Darth Nihilist in old uh, old Republic canon who's pretty who's pretty badass. A lot of people yeah. think that he may eventually make a make a appearance in this. This now, if you're thinking like Sith, now remember uh, the Sith are believed to be extinct in this time. Does that mean we will not get Sith? Because there's always the rule of two, um, but uh, the Sith will not be the main villains in this. Does that mean that we won't have bad Jedis? It just sounds like they're going to, they're, they're calling them space Vikings is what they're calling the villain group. So yeah, it could be I, more I, of like some Mandalorians. Yeah, it could be cool. Mandalorians. I do think we're going to get like bad Jedis. We're just going to, they're not going to be called Sith, right? Sith. Think of Sith. As, anybody who's not sure what a Sith is and a Jedi Jedis and Sith are like Catholic religion or Pentecostal or Mormons, right? They're, they're a sect of the force. They believe in a strict religious belief. So you can still have other groups of dark side users that aren't Sith. They could be something else. Yeah. I'm so. sure. I mean, if like you said, they've been working on this for two years. I don't know how they kept it under wraps for that long. Yeah. No, exactly. Projected out by this point. So it's, I'm pretty excited just kind of just to see where they're going with it. I love a new spin yeah. on the Star Wars. Yeah. And it's basically saying like, oh, hey, remember how everybody was complaining about how they lost all this canon stuff? Yeah. Well, here, here's your new filler that's well, basically going to be filling in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, basically. I mean, my, and I'm pretty excited about new stories. Um, my only regret, I kind of wish they would have went even a little bit further back, to be honest with you. 200 years is good. I would have liked to see 500 years. I want so far back that we don't have any connections at all to, you know, what we've already seen. I mean, other than maybe Yoda. I mean, unless unless they go a thousand years back, you're still going to have Yoda. He's pretty old. And you can throw in yeah. like your Maz Kanadas and stuff like that. But like, I don't want to, I don't want Chewbacca showing up. I don't want, like, 
So, I mean, whatever. I mean, we could still have, we're probably still going to get Jabba the Hutt. And we're probably still going to get, obviously get Yoda. And we're going to get Maz Kanata. There's a few beings that are very old that I'm sure we'll get in the series. But I just kind of hope that it would be far enough back that there would be just no connections. You could tell whatever stories you want to. And I guess you can a little bit, but 200 years isn't that long ago in, in a, you know, in a thousand year galaxy. They can't go that far back because you still want to have... Like for the younger generation, like our kids, like yeah. you still want, you still want to make stuff that can still be somewhat connected. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that makes sense. You don't want it to be, you know, now they got to learn this completely new micro schism of the Star Wars universe. They 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 want it to be like the Venn diagram, where you still got yeah, that you know, makes sense. The it's, crossover. It's still gonna it's look familiar. To make it so that you know you're gonna have to buy all this new stuff just to find out, you know. How they mention, you know, Tatooine, you know, once. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, that, actually, that, that that does make it. That's probably the best argument I've heard for keeping it a little bit closer. You can tell your own stories, but you're still not far, so far away that you can't show people like you can't show people Yoda or you can't show people things that yeah. they do recognize. I guess that makes a lot of sense. Um, there's been no word yet on on movies or TV shows. I can't imagine that they're going to invest this much into into a universe, uh, a new time period without giving us a TV show, um, at least a t- TV or Disney plus show Poss- probably, possibly a movie. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a movie about this either. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, right now, all we know is about the books and the novels. There's going to be a lot more of the novels and the comics. There's going to be a lot more to come. I'm sure. Um, they still have a star Wars movie on the, on the slate for 2021 or 22. We still don't know what that is. So I, I, They've been putting the story group together. If you, like I said, if you guys watch the video, it's pretty cool. They show all the people kind of working it out, trying to figure out what they're doing. So um, any of the complaints of the last of the sequel trilogy where people said that there wasn't enough people mapping it out, I don't think that's going to be the problem going forward. So I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited for the future of Star Wars. I'm glad that they they seem to really have an idea, a direction, and they have a lot of people on board going forward. So. And prepare your wallets, people. That's all. I, that's how the last thing I can tell you. Just Dude, get go- ready to start dropping money. I'm going to Disneyland in May. I don't want to talk about how much money I'm going to spend at Star Wars Land. I'm about to book my Jedi lightsaber making reservation. You have to you have to book that in advance. You can show up, but apparently it's recommended you book sixty days in advance so you guarantee your time slot. Oh, God. Yeah, I got a book 60 days in advance to spend $200, so I'm excited for that. It's going to be great. But you're going to be super jealous when I show you my lightsaber. It's going to be awesome. Um, a little bit of other Star Wars news we got. Apparently, uh, it dropped today that it sounds like Robert Rodriguez and James Mangold are going to be directing episodes of Mandalorian Season 2. So it sounds John like uh, John Favreau is continuing his trend of uh, bringing in fantastic directors to direct episodes. Yeah. I I mean, what was, uh, God, what's his name? Tiki. Uh, Taiko Waititi. Yeah, yeah. He he directed the last episode, and that was probably one of my most favorite episodes. I really hope the armor comes back. I really want to see her. Uh, dude, she's she's absolutely coming back. She is a badass. Yeah, she was just like <laughs> beating the crap out of everything. That was awesome. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to having both. I just want to see if they're just going to do one episode or if they're going to do multiple episodes. Um, uh, I, I look forward to finding out you know, what exactly. I just want it. I just want more Mandalorian right now. Well, so. and it's funny you mentioned Taiko Waititi. He, uh, Taiko Waititi, you know, he was at the Oscars. I don't think we didn't talk Oscars last show. I'm not talking Oscars now because I just don't care. But uh, they were asking him on the red carpet about Star Wars, about Mandalorian, if he'd love to direct a Star Wars movie. Because there was a lot of rumors that he was gonna and talks. And he said that he has not had active talks with, with with Disney, but he would he would absolutely love to direct the Star Wars movie if they let him direct his Star Wars movie. So I don't know what that means. If I'm Disney, I, you know, maybe don't give him a main episode. Get like, say. Taika, Taika, what would you like to do? If he's like, I want to do a Jabba the Hutt movie, just say, okay, and let him do it. Yeah. Because guaranteed it would be awesome. I think they should just let let people try. And just see what happens. Yes. Okay. Uh, Clone Wars Season 7 kicked off. I have not watched it yet, but that's just a reminder since we're talking Star Wars news here. Um, let's see here. Episode, we have finally have a release date on Star Wars, uh, episode nine. It is, I think, March 17th. I mean, we have a release date. I just lost it. But I think it's March 17th is, is going to be available to to get. So, 
uh, you know, not looking- not necessarily my favorite of the new ones, but uh, I will watch it a thousand times, so I'll be buying it immediately. I'm gonna watch it at least two more times. Yeah, for sure. Um, some more Disney news: Indiana Jones Five apparently is starting production in two months, according to Harrison Ford. Uh, the script has been hammered out, and they have a a plan, and they're going forward with Indiana Jones Five. Um, it sounds very much like this is going to be. They're calling this the uh, a legacy, so. Sounds like they're going to be wrapping this up and bringing back all the... Uh, it's kind of popular right now to say they're going to end game it because that's what everybody keeps saying, but they're going to bring everybody back. Um, rumors are, fingers crossed, this is true, is that Short Round will be coming back for this movie, which would be amazing. Uh, they should just bring back Sean Connery. Um, uh, yeah, that would be cool. We could bring them all back. I mean, he died in, technically in the last movie, so it would be hard to do, but he could come back as a force ghost. That would be great. No. What if they change out Shayla Booth for Adam Driver and Adam Driver can be his son? Uh, so I just surprised Harrison Ford is still going to be able to move on the set. That's yeah. We'll we'll see how much action he does. But um, the other bit of news that came out today that apparently Steven Spielberg is actually not going to direct this. That he has tapped James Mangold, who did uh, Logan and Ford versus Ferrari. Ooh. Yeah, I think he did a Bond movie. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, he is look, apparently going to uh, – he's going to be heading the new Indiana Jones movie. So, yeah, Maybe, you know, is one of my favorites. So I did not hate Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. In fact, on rewatch just recently, it's actually a pretty good movie. The ending is terrible, but the movie itself is decent. Uh, it was, it's pretty entertaining. People criticize it, I think, a little more than it deserved. Um, that being said, this is going to be an Indiana Jones. It's not directed by Spielberg. He's still going to produce and be, you know – be heavily involved but it's not written by george lucas so you know what it might be good to get a little bit of new blood in here and have us tell a new yeah. indiana jones story it's indiana jones it's not high concept <laughs> it's never has been high concept yeah. movie art i mean it's just Let him... it's a dude with a whip doing a bunch of weird archaeology yeah. archaeological let him stuff. punch like... communists and nazis and fascists across the world that's yeah. all i care about we just want to see Nazi's faces melting off. That's yeah. all. Uh, speaking of Avengers Endgame, apparently Chris Pratt uh, just started filming Jurassic Park or Jurassic World 3 called Jurassic World Domination. Uh, and he says that they are wow. trying, they're trying to, they said this, this is going to be. Egg ball. Yeah. Prop, domina- oh. not, domination, not dominatrix. Uh, apparently he oh. said that this is going to be the end game of Jurassic Park. And that everyone is returning for Jurassic World 3. Yeah. Well, I still have not watched Jurassic World 2. So I believe I it's no... on my Voodoo account, Ryan. Just saying. Yeah. The, maybe I'll get around to it. It's fine. I mean, they're all fine. Let's be honest. The first one was great. Every other one since then have been like fine to bad to good. Yeah. Just get through it. Eat yeah. Some to, just like whatever. We'll see. I, I'm neither excited nor not excited for this new Jurassic World movie. I know I'm going to go see it because my kids like watching dinosaurs eat people. I mean, I do too, so it's cool. Uh, Netflix dropped a first trailer for uh, for their Transformers animated CGI show that they are producing right now. It looks pretty good. They've committed yeah. to a lot of anime stuff, and this looks pretty good. Yeah, it it looks. I mean, it it looks like how you want Transformers to look. I mean, I you, you can't really ask for much more. Nope. It's Transformers. Okay. I mean, you Transformers. Can't... Check out the trailer. Um, they also dropped a new trailer for Altered Carbon. We're not going to talk about it though because the new season drops uh, tomorrow. So just watch it. I've heard it's really good. I've heard it's better than the first season. So excited! I started reading the book. Yeah, Altered Carbon. When you get through it, I'm, I'm anxious to see your take on what you think about it. So, um, yeah. HBO Max has officially announced that they are going to be doing a Friends reunion special. <laughs> so, and I found out that if you have HBO Go or HBO Now or whatever like that, then you're automatically going to get the HBO Max thing. So, we'll, we'll all find out. All these new streaming services are launching this year. I'm sure where they're all going to end up costing us money that we don't want to spend. Um, we did get a new, uh, speaking of trailers, we got a new trailer for Westworld season three. It was a surprise trailer that dropped last week. Um, season three is coming out March 17th. So it's actually way sooner than I thought. And 
if you have not watched the trailer for it, check it out. It is really good. Um, I know a yeah. lot of people kind of left Westworld because it got confusing. Season three, it seems to be much more Blade Runner than Cowboy, and it looks expensive and it looks really good. You know, I'll be honest. I have not even watched season two. Uh, watch it. I, you know what? I know season one made a lot of people like brains hurt, and season two did that a little bit, but it was a, little, a lot more straightforward than season one. Um, okay. Season two is a lot less mystery box and a lot more like, what does it mean? What what, what does it mean if humans are torturing things that aren't technically alive, but maybe they are alive? Like, wh- what does that make? It, it's a, it's a very deep thought, but it's a lot of action. It's really well done. Um, and season two really wraps up the Westworld itself story. So Westworld's season three is much more a continuation, but its own story. That is a lot more futuristic than, uh, it, like I said, it looks way more like the Blade Runner world than it looks like a Western world now. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try to pencil in some time to watch Westworld season two. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's see here. We are running out of time. So last couple of little items we'll hit real fast. Uh, Billy Eilish did the no time to die song. It's a new theme for James Bond. Check it out. If you haven't, I actually am not a huge fan of Billy Eilish, but I think it's a pretty good song. Uh, we got a Stranger Things tease where we now officially know, spoiler alert, that Hopper, Jim Hopper, is, is alive and in Russia. Oh. There you go. Um, we got a first look at the, the new Batman, the Robert Pattinson Batman. I don't know, whatever. The red light, Amsterdam light bulb Here's Batman. my take. His costume looks really weird. I don't really care. These are all like, pre-production until i see something in action like in a trailer i'm not judging what his costume look i'm not judging what his costume looks like because there's a stunt dude in it riding on a motorcycle somewhere without any cgi whatever we'll see how it looks when it's done maybe the lighting choice wasn't the best yeah it wasn't i i think there's better ways to reveal the costume and i think we're probably going to get something more i mean i think the reviews have been kind of mixed but i think in leading up or i think in the next month or two we're going to get an actual like set like like a nice photo released by somebody who's paid to release photos so mm-hmm. i don't know we'll see um fury road apparently has officially gotten a green uh, a green light for the sequel which is going to start filming this year so if you're a big mad right. max fury road fo- uh, fan you're gonna got some more coming uh there's a live action aladdin 2 sequel officially been confirmed which is no surprise considering the first one made a uh, billion dollars they're saying now that it will not follow the disney animated sequel return of jafar but yeah right it will yeah, that's, that's fine. That one wasn't that good anyways. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh, also, speaking of Batman, if you are an absolute Bat-aholic, you, there's a, uh, a Batman-themed restaurant opening in London that you can eat at, so, eh. I'm looking... I'll try it. Yeah, whatever. I'll go there if I'm in London. Because, you know, I go to London so often. Uh, yeah. And if you're in London, you might as well head over to Paris because apparently they're opening a Frozen-themed land in Disneyland Paris. All right. I have not told my daughters yet because they will demand that we fly there immediately. Uh, and then last last little bit of news we got is, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Chris, Christof, Christopher Hyver, Hyver, whatever. Um, nailed it. I nailed it. Absolutely <laughs> nailed it. I mean, I could do this all day. I, we should just have a podcast of me reading Swedish names. Um, also known as Tormund from Game of Thrones, has joined season two of The Witcher. Ooh. You know, I feel like there needed to be a Tormund show. Like, I know it's never going to happen, but I'll take I'll take this just all so I, I can get more of them. All I, know is of- a, all I know is if Netflix doesn't just literally cast Tormund... If he's not playing Tormund on the show, I don't know what they're doing with themselves. That's right. He better be playing, like, Tormund. Yeah, his name could be, like, Torment, but with instead of a D, it's got a T, And but he's just better. <laughs> he Hopefully he's a wildling from the north. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and he talks about how he's looking for a big woman. Yeah, he's looking for his Amazon woman. Uh, and yeah. then I know I said that was last bit of news, but this isn't really news. This is just something everyone needs to know. The Baby Yoda merchandise is officially out, uh, ready for pre-order. Most of it's not coming out until the summer or even December, but they have animatronic Baby Yodas. I missed the opportunity to order mine, so now I'm waiting for the second wave. 
But uh, whatever. It's out there now, people. Get your merchandise. Get it now. They they are going to make bajillions of dollars off of Baby Yoda merchandise. That's all. Yeah, that's just off me when I go to Disneyland and buy all the Baby Yoda merchandise. Uh, but yeah, that is it. That is all the news we got. Unless you got something you want to talk about. No, I not anything that's off the top of my head, sir. Well, uh, we do not have a from the Fable Fifty tonight because uh, Ryan failed at his job and didn't post a, a post. I I was occupied. And, well, uh, and full disclosure, I didn't even know if we were going to have a show tonight because I've been working really late hours this week because I just got back from vacation and that's what happens. But uh, yeah. so I did not let Ryan know until literally about, what, 20 minutes before we started recording? Yeah. Go ahead and put tonight. the show post up. It's like, yeah, okay, thanks. What a loser. Yeah. But we, I do have some recommendation. And no, no, no. I was gonna say, but we do have one. We are, we are trying to fulfill past debts, past obligations, and it was brought to our attention that Ryan, on his own and completely all his fault, forgot to read a question from our one of our top, top, absolute yeah. top fans, Christine. Well, I would like to say that there was only one person in that whole conversation that you that was had between look, geek dad look it says geek dad report i believe that is both of us ryan yeah. just because you well, don't pay I, attention does not mean it's my fault it's your fault well i would just if you note the conversation before how it is very much geared toward uh, a certain friendship that i am not a part of well you're about to uh, not be part of any friendship with attitude like that yeah. Well, Whatever. Anyway, we won't assign blame, even though we all know it was your fault. We will not assign blame on this show. But what we will do is uh, we will not let these travesties stand. So, Christine, tonight you get your own from the faithful one segment of the show. That's you. Yes. And we were going to answer your question from uh, January 31st. So, you know, not, not that long ago. She would like to know, Christine would like to know. First of all, why Ryan is so bad at his job. Yeah, no. that's, uh, that's not how the question started. All but. right, she would like to know, uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. What shows do our kids watch on repeat? Her four-year-old watches Spider-Verse nonstop. First of all, I would like to say that as far as things that go nonstop, Spider-Verse is a pretty good one to watch over and over. That's a good movie. Great soundtrack. Yeah. Excellent movie. Great soundtrack. Uh, you can get listen to it on Spotify if you really want to. Um, my daughter is currently into We Bear Bears. Oh, nice! And uh, We Bear Bears and Adventure Time. She's already she watched all the Adventure Time episodes in like a two month span, and uh, she's just been rewatching like the episode that she really liked, which is fun. Which is it's sad for me because. I we, watched all of them when they were airing, and my kids had zero interest in watching Adventure Time. We Bear Bears. Is that the three bears that we, all live together? Yeah, that's the, the panda, yeah, the that's brown pretty, bear, and the That's a pretty bear. funny show. I've watched that. That's pretty funny. They, like, stack up on each other and walk around sometimes. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> they're really into that show right now. Uh, my kids are into anime right now, which is really weird. Uh, they watched Dragon Ball with me for like a little while, and then they just gave up, and they had no interest in watching cartoons with me. But my oldest got hooked on My Hero Academia, and that's all she ever wants to watch. Um, there's a whole bunch of animes on Netflix, which they find and they watch all the time. It's kind of hard because, you know, Netflix, I mean, anime for the most part is fairly harmless is pg-13 or less but there's a lot of anime that's not for kids like castlevania which season three launches mm -hmm. next week uh that i have to they're like and the problem is the algorithm's like oh they watch this and they're like oh this one looks like that let's watch this without knowing that it's rated r and people are getting their heads chopped off uh so that's that's been a struggle the other thing uh frozen 2 has been on loop here for a while you know i watched oh, frozen 1 a million times Finally got out of Frozen 1, and now Frozen 2 came along, and, yeah. My daughter had it on uh, her calendar. So she I found out what day Frozen it. 2 launched, and she circled it on her calendar and was counting down days until it came out on digital. Are they still, have they watched Voltron yet on Netflix? Uh, they have not watched Voltron. They did watch, uh, I don't know, the, the Dragon Prince or something? I don't know. 
something different. Okay, I was going to say that one. Lincoln, my oldest, really likes that show. He's gone through every single episode. Uh, they so. watch Shira, Princess of Power. They binge watch over. They have watched uh, Full House and Full, well, they've watched Fuller House every single all six seasons like thirteen times. A Fuller House, the new Fuller one? House. My youngest will oh my just God. start watching Stranger Things by herself. She'll just watch random episodes of Stranger Things and then they'll watch Fuller House and then anime. Kids these days oh. have the weirdest watching habits. I don't even know what to say. That's too I'm... much content. It was we were about that age when we watched Full House, so yeah, I liked. Full, I mean, I liked Full House. I'm not mad they're watching Fuller House. It's just yeah, it's so weird. They keep they watch the seasons over and over again. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it's interesting what the. I mean, like if we had had that capabilities when we were kids, could you know? Because I had like if I didn't VCR it, you know, uh, at three o'clock in the afternoon when I had to sprint home and record something. You know, I would never have gotten a chance to watch it until, you know, you, when you pull up the TV guide and you're like, okay, well, this episode is going to be on in April. Dude, the TV guides, I remember those. I mean, or when you can't afford TV guide, you get the newspaper. It would have the local of what was going to be on. But, yeah, I, I remember those days. But I remember, like, I wore out. There's a few movies we wore out. Like, I remember we had a VHS copy of Willow. We watched that a thousand times. Uh, I yeah. literally wore out my Return of the Jedi to the point where I had to buy a second VHS of Return of the Jedi. But I don't remember watching things over and over and over again when we were younger. I mean, I feel like we were always find something new. I mean, there was a movie we always liked, but yeah, I mean, we had we had the movie that you know or whatever your VHS, but we didn't have that kind of capabilities. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You couldn't really watch a show again. I mean, you could watch reruns, but it would just pop up occasionally. You never knew when it was like syndicated. You didn't know when you'd see the rerun. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, oh, I guess this is the thing now. Date. Well. All right, there you go. Well, thank you for your question, Christine. Sorry we did forget to uh, to answer it, but like I said, you got your own yeah. special from the faithful one tonight. So and that apology is one hundred percent from Brian because it wasn't my fault. Absolutely, so. Ryan's fault. Uh, but moving on, real quick before we get out of here, we have uh, a couple of weekly recommendations. What you should or shouldn't be uh, wasting your time doing this week. Ryan, would you like to go first? All right, so we are about halfway through the the Hunter show that's on Netflix. Um, if you're not familiar with it, the news has been uh, blasting it <laughs> in in it's some pretty, ways. It's pretty good. I watched. Uh, the, I haven't watched the whole thing. I watched the first episode, which was really good. It's like a yeah, little mini movie. We're about like we're on episode five or six. I mean, they are full one hour episodes. They're not like yeah. forty five minutes like that so you need to block off a decent amount of time if you're going to try and binge watch them um it's basically the 80s and they're hunting down nazis that are still around in america um it's actually 1977 so, because star wars is in theaters okay but i mean good show we're enjoying it so far um and uh, another show that we had started is um uh, lock and key on netflix uh, and we're about like four episodes in. It's just, it's like we have so much stuff that we're just trying to get through that we can never, you know, yeah. just finish one thing. Yeah. So. A lot of content. Um, nice. Yeah. Well, since you stole both of my recommendations, uh, I'll say check out altered carbon that, that starts on tomorrow. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, what else have we been watching? I've been watching, we watched, we watched a show on Netflix called, October Faction. It's a new kind of Monster Hunter show. Uh, I re- actually enjoyed it. It's really cheesy. It's well, it's not really cheesy, but it's pretty cheesy, kind of corny. But if you want a fun like monster hunting show that you can blow through pretty quickly, that you don't have yeah. to pay too much attention to, I re- I liked it. Ten episodes on Netflix. It was worth a watch. Yeah. So my son, uh, I came in. He was watching like Discovery Channel or Animal Planet. It had like this. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I like this show. I'm like, dude, 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 you know, there's no such thing as Sasquatch. And he's like, well, how do you know? These guys, you know, are pretty convincing. Oh, no. Your son's on the path to fake news. One of the main guys' name is Bobo. I'm like, <laughs> so you cannot trust a human being with the name of Bobo. You know that guy is I got a brother out. named Bo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, man. That's funny. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I do have a other one other recommendation. While I was on vacation, we watched uh, Vice, the uh, the Dick Cheney yeah, she, movie. 
The Dick Cheney movie, written by, written and directed by Adam McKay. Uh, wow, it is incredible. I highly recommend it. Everybody watch it. Um, it is. Woo. You said it's kind of in the vein of the Big Short or something. Yeah, it's right? a lot like it's. Well, it's, it's a lot like the Big Short, like Adam McKay's other kind of uh, dramatic movie. Um, it's written. It's written in a way that's that's com- comical at times, but also easy to digest and understand what's going out on. So. You know, like the big short, they let a lot of complex political things. So even if you're not really into like politics, um, you know, I watch it with my wife and, she, you know, she's political, but she doesn't really pay attention to like the ins and out of like what the secretary of state does for a job and what, you know, like the ins and out of government that she knows, you know, the basics of what, how the government functions and what they do. But, um, you know, she may not know exactly what each office is going to do 24 seven. And so cool. And she really liked Vice and the, they do it, and that's what I liked about it. They lay everything out in a way that even if you don't like study politics for your career, you can understand exactly what happened, um, yeah. how Dick Cheney kind of rise to power. Um, you know, obviously it's a you know obviously it's a story about somebody who's still alive, so stories have been refuted. How much can you actually know from classifications? But um, the sources on this are supposedly pretty good, and. When you watch the movie, man, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty incredible. It's a pretty in, in crazy look at kind of how we are where we are now. And yeah. uh, I look forward to trying it out. I would Let highly me... recommend Vice. It is currently streaming for free on Hulu. If anybody wants to watch it, there you have to search the search bar for it. But um, amazing performances, excellent direction, great story. When it was over, my wife's like. Uh, what movie won the Oscar the year this came out? I was like, I think it's The Shape of Water. She's like, well, it shouldn't have. <laughs> Vice should have won everything. It is such a good movie. I would just... the Dude, Christian Bale is Dick Cheney. You you never once are like, oh, that's Christian Bale. The whole time. Maybe a little bit early on in the, in the movie when he's younger, but it's uh, it's great. I highly recommend Vice streaming on Hulu. So, All right. Well, I think I'll that's it. Check. I think it's the show. Unless you got something else you would like to announce to the people. Uh, no, I, I think that we're, we're coming up as a, episode 199. We have the pivotal 200 episode, the, the series defining episode. Yeah, I mean, this, the, our next episode is going to be like a meteorite that hits a planet and the planet dies. It's just like, it's all over after yeah. that. And it's, it's kind of like at the very end of Terminator 2, where, where his arms going into the lava pit. And it goes like this. Yeah. And then oh, episode 200 is going to be like a giant pit of lava. Yeah. You know how like, it's going to be like a giant, it's going to be like Mount St. Helens. You know, like you have this massively awesome eruption and then there's nothing left after that. That's going to be like what episode 200 is. Yeah. Because the lava just decimated everything. Yeah. Like a series finale. Oh. Like yeah. in episode nine, like a, the end of the Skywalker saga. It's going to all be epic. Just like all those things. And we'll if you have any opinion on that, just let us know. Yeah, I mean, spoiler alert, it's our last show. But, uh, you know, hey, whatever. It's going to be great. We're going to love it. And if oh. you have stuck around to uh, an hour and 12, 13 minutes into this show, you deserve to be the first people to know that me and Ryan have decided that the Geek Dad Report has ran its course. Episode 200 will, in fact, be our last Geek Dad Report. Uh, we do have some other things hopefully we're going to come up with so you won't see the last of us. If uh, you are one of our faithful 15, <laughs> we're going to have more stuff. The Facebook page will still be there. We're still going to do some geek and nerd stuff. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to talk more about while we're ending the show next week. But. Because the podcast space, there's, nobody's really in it, and there's not a lot of stuff going on. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, easy throw, for us to come throw up. Throw a dart at a topic, and we could just do a podcast about it because no like dude, no one's ever done one like that before. It's going to be great. We're just, we're just going to just be throwing stuff off the wall and it's going to be like, you know, just Top flaring hit. up everywhere. It's going to be number one downloaded show in America immediately. It's going to be just such a, a niche, a niche and a want for all these little different things. But, uh, but yeah, but I mean, obviously we're going to talk a hell of a lot more about it next week. Um, we're going to have a, we're out, well, not next week, our next show. We're not sure exactly when that's going to be, but we're going to have a fun 200th episode. We'll do some fun stuff. And we're going to talk about it. But ultimately, all good things must come to an end. And after 200 episodes of the show proper, and what, another at least 100 episodes of Sideshows? Mm-hmm. I mean, what, it's well, we've been doing this for like, what, five, six years? I mean, that's a long-ass time. Going on six years of doing the Geek Dad Report. So 
uh, you know, things must come to an end, adapt, evolve, do something else. So we're going to, we're going to figure out what that next yeah. step is, but, uh, but yeah, next week, like I said, we're talking a lot more about it next week, but or our next episode, but episode 200 will be in fact, the series finale of the geek dad reports. Yes. So tune in for that. And then Netflix will buy our syndication. So. And we don't have any cool announcements. Like we're going to Spotify or something. We're just not doing this shit anymore. So yeah, we can try. Doesn't mean we haven't had fun. It doesn't mean we're not going to have fun on the next episode. So it's going to be great. You'll love it. And if you got any ideas for podcasts for us, let us know. We need to make a million dollars in a week. Yeah. We'll, we'll gladly maybe let you chip in. Yeah. There you go. All right. Well, uh, I mean, you can tell people where to find us, but I don't think it really matters at this point. Yeah, it doesn't. You can. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Go to those and places. Geek Dad Report, and that's and there it is. That's it. Those are all the places. If you'd like to find me on Twitter, it's Brian was fifty three. Yeah. He's Big Bruiser with like a B R U S E R R T yeah. Niner, uh, and yeah. that's it. There you go. That's that's the show. So subscribe. go ahead and subscribe if you want to. Definitely subscribe. Uh, if we hit 1 million subscribers, we'll bring the show back. We easily can be bought. But until that point, until next time, everybody, stay awesome. And stay nerdy, everyone. <laughs>